So this final talk here is, is about billing. Some of you will be going out in your own practice. Some of you will be doing pain management procedures, I'm sure, right? You have that in your armamentarium. You want to go out and you do want to do injections, maybe SI joint injections and trigger point injections and facet joint injections, epidural steroid injections, transferaminal injections, those of you who are pursuing pain. And even if you're not pursuing pain, right, you have to know about how you're going to bill for your services. And there's been a huge propulsion of interest in recent years about the use of ultrasound guided techniques. You folks learn ultrasound during your training, correct? Not just for diagnostic purposes, I'm sure you do, but how about for the guiding needle placement and so forth, right? Yes. And do you know how to bill for that? Do you know how to bill for ultrasound guided approaches, do you? Do you know what the terms bundled versus unbundled mean? What does bundled versus unbundled mean? I couldn't tell you. Anybody know? Bundled versus unbundled. This is the crux of what I'm going to talk about today. Bundled is bad. Just remember that B is bad. Okay, if you see the word bundled, that's this. That's not good. Why? Because what the insurance company is doing is saying, you don't have the right to bill for your procedure plus the use of ultrasound or the use of fluoroscopy. You're going to get one fee. One fee only. Unbundled is good but there are less and less procedures that are unbundled. So please pay attention. I will leave this PowerPoint for you and the other one as well if you have interest in that. I have no disclosures. I want to talk about how do you get paid for what you do? Remember, bundled is bad. So when you see that term, this is the X factor. You don't like that. Unbundled, good. We're seeing a lot less unbundled and a lot more bundled in contemporary times. Well, I also want to talk about eight procedures that some of you will be seeing on a regular basis, especially if you go into pain management. Up until about 10 years ago, most common pain injection codes had almost no bundling, which was excellent. So you could do either ultrasound guided or fluoroscopically guided injections. And you would get paid two, two rate. You get paid for the procedure as well as for the use of either ultrasound or fluoroscopy. And so it was obviously lucrative and beneficial to your patients to use some form of imaging to do your epidural or transferaminal injections or even your trigger point injections. But as the use of, C of imaging CPT codes along with pain injection CPTs increased, the payers or the insurance companies began to push back. They said, well, you, you're going to use fluoroscopy for that epidural injection anyway. Why, why would I pay you two rates or two fees? We're going to bundle this together. Remember, bundled is bad. And so you had to appeal it sometimes if you really thought, hey, I, I did a lot of extra work here, and I exposed myself to extra ri uh, risk by, by uh, a radiation exposure. I was in the uh, fluoroscopy suite for 10 minutes doing this difficult procedure. I should get paid. When it was bundled, you would not get paid unless you set forth an appeal. Sometimes you would win, much less commonly in, co in contemporary practice. So the tactic has been to redefine and assign new CPT codes. The insurance companies are looking for new common procedural terminology codes that now have the words with ultrasound guidance or with imaging already built in. So bundle is reduced. Remember, you see the word bundled. Bundled is B. Bundled is bad. Bundled means reduce the value of what you've done, what you've done. So these are two numbers. I want you to study these two numbers because this is really, really important for billing. 76942, that's when ultrasound is used during your procedure. 77002, that's when fluoroscopy is used for your procedure. These are unbundled codes. Is that good or bad? Good. Good. It's unbundled, which means that you can use either ultrasound or fluoroscopy. And if you use ultrasound, 76942, you'll get an extra, well, it depends if you do it in the office. It gets tricky. If you do procedures in the office versus the hospital, you get more money in the office than you do in the hospital. Okay, so if you do it in the office, and you use ultrasound, you get an extra 60 bucks. If you do it in the office and you use fluoro, you get an extra $107. So fluoro is a little bit higher reimbursed than ultrasound. If you do it in your hospital with ultrasound, it's about 35 bucks. It's about 30 bucks with fluoro. Okay, but you can see that it varies from state to state. This is all Medicare information, but this is the state of Illinois right now. This is what's happening right now in 2020. You can bill for the, for the office or you can bill for being in a hospital. You always get paid higher rate if you do procedures in the office compared to doing them in a hospital. These are unbundled. This means that you can bill for the procedure, trigger points, carpal tunnel, refilling an intrathecal drug delivery system pump, intercostal nerve blocks, stellate ganglion blocks, lumbar sympathetic, 
All of those are unbundled, meaning you get two fees. You get a fee from the insurance company for the procedure, and you get a fee from the insurance company for the use of imaging. Again, depending on whether you use ultrasound or fluoro, whether you do it in the office or you do it in a hospital. It gets a little tricky, right? But unbundled is good from, from a perspective of being paid, being able to pay your staff and your electricity and your heat and go on vacations and pay your kids college and so forth. Unbundled is better than bundled. Bundled is not good. These are bundled procedures, okay? Bundled procedures. Again, you see that if you do the procedures in your office compared to in the facility, you get more money to do them in the office without any question whatsoever. Sometimes it's up to twice as much. And that includes injecting into small joints, uh, medium-sized joints, large joints, SI joint injection, epidurals, uh, lumbar, cervical, transforaminal, transforaminal, extra levels. All of these are bundled procedures. Is that good or bad? It's bad, right? You can't bill for the use of imaging because it's anticipated that you must use the imaging for these procedures. Now, you really don't have to use imaging to inject a small joint, right? The orthopods do it all the time. They inject even knees and hips and shoulders. They don't even use ultrasound or fluoro. They just palpate and inject. But it doesn't matter because they get the same rate for doing that as if they had used ultrasound or fluoro. Very important. So let's look at these CPT codes, okay? These are where ultrasound is included. So you can inject a joint or a burr. So let's go back one, one slide. Right here. Okay, these are bundled procedures. And the language actually says, with ultrasound guidance, with ultrasound guidance, you're not going to get an extra fee. These are bundled procedures. Whether you're injecting a small joint, a medium-sized joint, or a large joint, you're not going to get more than just the fee for the procedure. Here we go again for other procedures. Facet joint injections, one level or additional levels. Neurolytic, meaning radio frequency of the facet joint nerve, cervical or thoracic or lumbar. These are all bundled procedures, okay? You don't get paid extra fee for using either ultrasound or fluoroscopy. <clears throat> Let's look about where it's unbundled versus bundled. Unbundled, of course, is better. You get paid for both the procedure as well as the imaging. And I want to go through these eight procedures here, okay? Stellate ganglion block, is it bundled or unbundled? Unbundled. So you get paid for the stellate block and you get paid for the use of imaging. Glenohumeral and AC joint injections, bundled or unbundled? Think about it for a second. Is it bundled or unbundled? It's both. It's bundled if you use ultrasound, meaning you don't get an extra rate, but it's unbundled, interestingly, if you use fluoro. For some reason, Medicare continues to pay you a higher rate for using fluoro, but not ultrasound for shoulder injections. Intercostal nerve blocks, bundled or unbundled? unbundled? Unbundled. So you get the bill for your procedure as well as for the use of imaging guidance when you use, when you do intercostal nerve blocks. Hip injections, bundled or unbundled? Both. So again, hip injections, you will be able to bill separately if you use fluoro, but not use ultrasound. Ryan's been in my clinic, he's seen, sometimes he'll say, or sometimes somebody will say, how come you're not using ultrasound for this procedure and we're using fluoro? Well, I like fluoro, I like ultrasound, but the truth be told is that I can get paid not just for the knee injection with fluoro, I get paid the fluoro fee as well, not ultrasound. How about caudal epidural steroid injections, bundled or unbundled? Bundled. So you don't get any, anything extra for using either ultrasound or fluoroscopy. How about sacroiliac joint injections, bundled or unbundled? Bundled. Doesn't matter what you use. You can even do those blind, although I don't recommend it. But if you do sacroiliac joint injections, you only get paid for the injection. You don't get paid extra for using ultrasound or fluoro. Transferaminal epidural steroid injections and other neuraxial procedures. Bundled or unbundled? Bundled. Do not get paid for using imaging. I'm going to go through this for a minute because the truth be told, you're all going to be going out to practice very soon. Some sooner than others, right? And you're going to have the ability to use ultrasound, or fluoro, or both, or neither. So you have to think, what's going to drive my decision-making process? Why would I use ultrasound? Is it safer? Is it better? Is the success rate better? I'm going to show you what the data states on these eight procedures. We're going to go through them pretty quick, okay? Stellate ganglion block. Bundled or unbundled? Unbundled, right? <coughs> unbundled. Imaging is payable in addition to the procedure. It doesn't matter whether you use 
ultrasound, or fluoro. You get paid extra. It's an unbundled procedure to do a stellate block. So what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose fluoro or are you going to choose ultrasound? Anybody? What's safer? Fluoro, you can see vascular structures. Or no, ultrasound, you can see vascular structures. Okay, does that translate into higher success or less complications? Let's go through it really fast. So this is what a, an ultrasound guided stellate ganglion look, looks like, right? There's a transducer, there's a, ne a needle coming in from lateral to medial. And this is what you see, and Ryan's correct. You see the trachea, you can't see the trachea with fluoro. There's the esophagus. You can't see the esophagus with fluoro. There's the thyroid gland. You can't see the thyroid gland with fluoro. There's the sternocleidomastoid muscle. You can't see the sternocleidomastoid muscle with fluoro. There's the longest coli muscle. You can't see the longest coli muscle with fluoro. The transverse process, yes, you can see that with fluoro or ultrasound. The target, of course, is directly external to the longest coli muscle. So seeing all these things is fantastic. We'll move a little bit laterally. There's the longest coli muscle. It's labeled LC. You see it there, right? And the stellate ganglion is going to be sitting directly external to the longest coli muscle. So it would say seem intuitive and inferential. We should use ultrasound, right? Or maybe not. So SG stands for the, this actual hyperechoic structure right here. This is the stellate ganglion in this individual. Here's your longest coli muscle. So let's, and there's again, the same structures, the carotid artery, the internal jugular vein, all these things that you're seeing here, except for the transverse process, you can't see with fluoro. So should we use ultrasound or should we use fluoroscopy? You're getting paid for both. It's an unbundled procedure. Here's how I do the block. This is actually one of my patients. And I, I, I just put the ultrasound off, took it off. And then this is what you see when you use fluoroscopy. So there's the transverse process. Needle goes down, tap the transverse process. You're injecting contrast and you see the spread of contrast directly outside the longest coli muscle. Now, ultrasound has been associated with side effects and complications, and here's a case from the, the Medical College of Wisconsin published by a good friend of mine named Dr. Hariharan Shankar that showed a patient who developed severe brachial plexopathy after an ultrasound-guided stellate ganglion block. So ultrasound does not prevent complications, or at least does not eliminate complications. Here's a nice study of the use of ultrasound guidance to, uh, to, uh, to look for vascular puncture when performing stellate ganglion block. And you can see the esophagus was encountered one-third of the time at C6 and two-thirds of the time at C7. The retrieval artery was identified and, 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 and found, but in this study, it didn't make any difference. It didn't make any difference in terms of reducing risk whether you or not use ultrasound guidance for stellate ganglion block. So stellate ganglion block, it would seem to be intuitive and inferential that if you used ultrasound, you could see all these structures and you ought to be able to reduce complications, but in point of fact, that hasn't translated in the peer-reviewed literature. So you can still use ultrasound, and you can still use fluoroscopy, and you can still bill for them separately because this is an unbundled procedure. Stellate ganglion block, still an unbundled procedure. How about a chromioclavicular joint and glenohumeral joint, bundled or unbundled? Both. Both. So with fluoro, you get paid. With ultrasound, you won't get paid. Let's look at it. And you can see, actually, the language is very specific. Without ultrasound guidance, right? Without ultrasound guidance. And that's for any joint. Small joints, intermediate or medium-sized joints, large joints. Fluoro gets paid for joint injections. Ultrasound may be superior in terms of what you can visualize. Ultrasound does not get paid for joint injections. And the ones that are highlighted in red, those are the ones we're going to talk about, acromioclavicular, shoulder, hip, knee, and subacromial bursa. So here's what you see with ultrasound when you're doing your acromioclavicular joint injection, right? We're all familiar with the acromioclavicular joint. You can palpate it in almost all individuals, even in large people. We're looking for that fibrocartilaginous disc, and here's what the ultrasound image looks like. And our target is to place the needle directly be between the acromion and the clavicle, and you can see the tip of the needle in my patient right there. Very nice, right? Do you get paid for this, for using ultrasound to do AC joint injections? You do not. How about this, fluoro? And you can see here's another patient with a curved needle going into the acromioclavicular joint, a little bit of a half cc of contrast, and a nice arthrogram of the joint space. Do you get paid for this? Yes, this is, for the use of fluoro, this is a unbundled procedure. For the use of ultrasound, this is a bundled procedure. What about glenohumeral joint? Again, here's the use of ultrasound. And you can see that it makes sense to want to use ultrasound. We're putting our probe transversely across the scapular spine. 
You can see the infraspinatus, the deltoid, the head of the humerus, the glenoid process, and the spinal glenoid notch. And that's really where our target is before we perform our injection. It looks beautiful, but do you get paid for this? By using ultrasound. No, you only get the procedural cost. It's a, it's a bundled procedure with ultrasound. You do not get paid anything extra or additional above your CPT for the injection, okay? Here's our needle coming in for glenohumeral joint injection. Now, does it make sense about why you might select ultrasound over fluoro for the betterment of your patient? Well, there's only really one study, and it's already now five, six years old. This was pu published in the Journal of Clinical Ultrasound. It's a head-to-head -head comparison, systematic review, meta-analysis of ultrasound versus fluoro. Of the 42 studies, they looked at five studies met inclusion, only 406 patients, and it appears that the accuracy of getting into the glenohumeral joint was slightly higher with ultrasound than fluoro. Remember, ultrasound, you will not get paid for. Fluoro was only 80%. Ryan's has seen in my practice it's 100%, but in, according to this study, it was 80%. That's not statistically significant. So remember, when you make your selection, the factors, of course, most important is what are you doing for your patient, to the betterment of your patient, right? So this study, at least, would suggest that there's a slightly higher success rate associated with the use of ultrasound versus fluoro, but this is not statistically significant. Fluoro, glenohumeral joint injection, you'll be reimbursed. For the imaging ultrasound, you will not be. Intercostal nerve injection, bundled or unbundled? Bundled or unbundled? Bundled. No, it's unbundled. I told you that before, did I not? <laughs> Didn't we go over that? Okay. So these, this is where imaging is payable in addition to the procedure, intercostal injections, okay? I already talked about stellate blocks. We didn't talk about sympathetic blocks. Intercostal blocks. Now this is where it doesn't make a difference whether you use ultrasound or fluoro, but use something because you can bill separately. Of course you can do an intercostal block blindly, right? But then you can't bill for imaging. So if you're going to use imaging, you can bill for either ultrasound or fluoro with your intercostal blocks. This is what it looks like. Any, anybody in the room do these procedures here, intercostal injections? You've got your external and internal intercostal muscles over here, intercostal artery. Remember, you have vein, artery, and then the nerve is next to the artery. The innermost intercostal muscle here, you've got the pleura right here. So it makes sense where you might want to use ultrasound. Can you bill for it? Yes. Can you bill for fluoro? Yes. This is an unbundled procedure. Bundled B equals bad. Unbundled good, you can bill for the imaging. Okay? Making sense? Does it make sense to use ultrasound? So this is a very nice cadaver study that was conducted by Michael Gofeld and other people I know very well. And it was a cadaver study where they injected the intercostal nerves in cadavers, either using ultrasound or blindly. This was not comparing fluoro to ultrasound. This is ultrasound versus palpation techniques. And in the cadaver studies, they found a much higher success rate with ultrasound than just using landmarks. So if you're gonna use uh, ultrasound or fluoro, that's fine, you'll get paid for either, but make sure you use some type of imaging because you can see that the success rate of imaging is much higher of getting into that intercostal space, 97% versus 70 if you don't use any imaging at all. Hip intraarticular injections, bundled or unbundled? Both. How is, how is it both, Ryan? Ultrasound? They won't pay for ultrasound, yeah. they will pay for fluoro. Very good. So here we go again. And look, the language is very, is very precise. 20600 without ultrasound guidance, fluoro okay. 20605 without ultrasound guidance, fluoro okay. 20610 without ultrasound guidance, fluoro okay. Right, for small, intermediate, or large joints, you can use ultrasound perfectly acceptably. You will not be able to bill for it separately and distinctly. So this is what we see when we're talking about hip injections. There's your acetabulum femoral head, femoral neck, and the femoral joint space. And this is what we see, again, from my clinic. Here's the joint space, and this is the contrast that's being injected around the head of the, of the uh, femur, around the whole, the whole acetabulum. So does it really make a difference what you see there or there? I don't know. Are there any studies that have been conducted looking at fluoro versus ultrasound? Well, there's one, which is a, re a prospective study in 71 patients looking at fluoro versus ultrasound to do hip injections. Joint flexion was better when fluoro was used, and that was statistically significant, but pain reduction was better when ultrasound was used. I think it's a wash. And you can get paid 
for hip injections using fluoro. Can you get paid for hip injections using ultrasound? No. At least you can't bill the ultrasound portion of it. You will get paid for the injection, but you cannot bill for the imaging portion. Does this make sense? Yes. I know you all subscribe to this esoteric journal, Revista Brasileira de Rheumatologia, right? But this is the only study I can find on the entire topic. Knee injections, bundled or unbundled? Both. Right, it's a joint injection, the same as hip, the same as shoulder, the same as digits, right? Remember, this is really important language, and you need to know this when you're setting up a practice, when you have a practice manager come in, and you're talking about what you need to set up. Do you need an ultrasound machine? I would say yes, because things like Stellate Block, you get paid for whatever you use, whether it's fluoro or ultrasound. But you remember that fluoro gets reimbursed in many cases at a higher rate. Do you get paid at a higher rate doing it in your office or in the hospital? Absolutely. And you can see here the language is very precise. Without ultrasound guidance, fluoro is okay. Now we're talking about the knee. Here's what the ultrasound guidance looks like on the knee, right? Here's your vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, intermedius, and medialis. So you get to see a lot of stuff with ultrasound. And you can see your meniscus, your medial collateral ligament, all the ligaments that you have to see inside the knee you can see with ultrasound. The problem is it's a great technology, but you're not going to be able to reimburse or bill separately for the use of that technology in this case. Here's my patient, I injected the knee, and you can see whatever you see there, right? A, a, a prepatellar injection, and you can see that we can bill for this now separately and distinctly. This For the knee injection, the use of fluoro is a unbundled procedure. For the use of ultrasound, it's a bundled procedure. Are there any studies? Well, the only study that's been conducted in orthopedic literature was actually conducted on ultrasound versus, again, a blind technique. And once again, you'll see that there was a st statistically significant higher likelihood of getting inside the knee joint if you used ultrasound compared to not using ultrasound by a, a, a large factor, about 15 percentage points higher. I know your orthopedic surgeons are outstanding here, but almost none of them use any type of imaging modality to inject their patients. I know that, because I see a lot of your patients in my practice as well and they describe for me the technique of how the injections were done. They're almost always done blindly. And this, I think, is a, is a pretty liberal, uh, modestly higher success rate than I would expect, 80% success. I think it's more like 60 or 70%. I think the failure rate is very high when you do blind injections. But compared to the use of ultrasound, there's a much higher failure rate. Use of ultrasound, billable or not billable? Billable. Not billable. How about genicular nerves? Here's a very nice study which was just published last year in the journal Pain Physician that looked at the use of ultrasound versus fluoroscopy for genicular nerve injections. No difference whatsoever in outcomes whether you used ultrasound or fluoroscopy to block the genicular nerves of the knee. Billable or not billable? With fluoroscopy, yes. With ultrasound, no, still. This is another slide, kind of important. Fluoroscopy or ultrasound is payable, so this is unbundling, right? Trigger points. Interestingly enough, who would have thought that you could do a trigger point injection under fluoroscopy? It makes almost no sense, right? I mean, you can't see the trigger point, you can't see the muscle, yet and still you can bill for the use of fluoroscopy for trigger point injections and ultrasound. How about tendon sheaths, ligaments? Yes. How about therapeutic local anesthetic carpal tunnel? Yes. Interestingly, interestingly to me, you can fill an intrathecal pump, either a baclofen pump or a morphine pump or a dilated pump. If you use ultrasound to find that pump port, you can bill separately for that, not fluoro. So keep that in mind, those of you who are doing pump refills. Bundled, bad, bundled, bad. Do not get paid for the imaging, right? So these are the procedures where it doesn't matter what imaging you use, fluoro or ultrasound, you're not gonna bill an extra rate. Doesn't matter, you did it in the office, did it in the pain clinic, did it in the hospital, and that includes epidural steroid injections, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, transferaminal injections, or facet injections, or SI joint injections. Doesn't matter what you do. So for these procedures, if you like ultrasound, might as well use ultrasound. If you want to use ultrasound for your SI joint injections, go ahead and knock yourself out, because you're not going to get paid either way with fluoro. Yes? What if your ultrasound is diagnostic? Ah, yes, but you have to include the images and you have to include interpretation of the images and you have to include a treatment plan based upon that. That's the subject of a whole other lecture, yes. For diagnostic purposes, that's a, that's a different animal, yes. Let's look at caudal injections. 
<laughs> Anybody in the room doing caudal epidural injections at all? Yes. Brian, you've done a bunch. Anybody else done caudal injections? Yes, no? Okay. So this is what the sacral hiatus looks like, right, on a model on the left side. And these are fluoroscopic images of a needle going through the sacrococcygeal geal ligament into the caudal space, right, and the injection of contrast. And this is what it looks like ultrasonographically. There's your sacrococcygeal geal ligament. There's the cornua of the uh, S5, not fused, caudal canal, and the floor of the caudal canal under ultrasound. And this is a needle placed in on a sagittal view, looking at the needle in the sacral canal for a caudal epidural steroid injection. This is a fluoroscopic view from one of my patients. And you'll see, here's the needle coming in through the sacrococcygeal ligament, and you'll see a Christmas tree-like spread of your contract bilaterally. Anyone know what this white stripe is here? What, the, what that's called in the epidural space when there's a white stripe that separates right from left side? Sure. Plica mediana dorsalis. Plica mediana dorsalis. It's found in one to three percent of individuals. Okay, so is there any benefit to using? Now we know you're not going to get paid extra, right? These are bundled procedures doing caudal injections. You're not going to get an extra penny for doing them under fluoro or doing them under ultrasound. So why would you choose one or the other? Well, you want to see whether there's higher efficacy and lower complication rates by choosing one or the other, correct? So this is a nice study uh, from the Asian uh, folks who published in the American Journal of Physical Medicine Rehab, right? You guys know that journal. 120 patients, fluoro versus ultrasound, no difference between the groups in either pain relief or oswestry disability indices in terms of improvement and functionality. So this would seem to be indicating you can use either ultrasound or fluoro. If you do a lot of these, maybe you want to expose yourself to less ionizing radiation, so maybe you want to use ultrasound. Get good at it, right? Another study, also from Asian group, ultrasound versus fluoro, caudal, 110 patients, VAS, ODI, no difference between the groups. Another study demonstrating that there is equivalency or non-inferiority when we use ultrasound compared to fluoro for caudal epidural steroid injections. Here's another study, a third study just published last year, caudal epidural steroid injections in post-laminectomy patients. Ultrasound versus fluoroscopy, again, the p-values, not statistically significant, makes no difference in this group of patients whether you use fluoro or ultrasound to do your caudal injections. SI joint injections, bundled or unbundled? Bundled, bad, doesn't matter what you use. You're not gonna be able to bill for imaging, right? Here it is right here, okay? So image guidance is included in your CPT code, it's included in your fee, and that includes radio frequency, that includes neurotomy, that includes facet joint injection, medial branch injection, or SI joint injection. So, if you're not going to get paid extra, what would you choose? Ultrasound or fluoro for your SI joint injection? Does it make a difference? They're pretty much equivalent. Let's look at it. This is what you see using ultrasound. There's your sacrum, your ilium, and there's the target for your SI joint injection. And this is what it looks like under fluoro. I tend to prefer this view right here, the fluoroscopic view, because I can see everything. And you can see the contrast filling up the joint nicely on the right side. That's my anterior posterior view, that's my lateral view. This is also useful as well, right? But you're not gonna, it doesn't matter which one you choose, choose whichever one you're good at. Is there any study that shows superiority of ultrasound versus fluoro? Well, fluoro accuracy was a little bit higher than ultrasound, they're both pretty high. There's really no difference to your patients in terms of outcome or success, whether you select the use of fluoroscopy or ultrasound for doing SI joint injections. Controversial blocks, transferaminal epidural steroid injections, facet injections, let's look at that here. Remember, facet injections, are they bundled or unbundled? Bundled. Right, makes no difference whether you select the use of ultrasound or fluoroscopy for your patients. You're only gonna get one fee, and that's for the procedure itself. Paravertebral, facet, zygopophyseal joint injection, it doesn't matter what you do. So is there any data to suggest that ultrasound is superior or non-inferior to fluoro. Actually, the data, again, shows no statistical significance in outcome whether you do your lumbar medial branch facet injections or medial branch blocks using fluoro or ultrasound. Pick your weapon, choose your weapon. It's a bundled procedure. You will not be paid uh, regardless of which modality you select. This here is looking at transferaminal injections using ultrasound versus fluoro. And once again, VAS, 
Visual analog pain score, no difference. Uh, disability index, no difference. Success, no difference. So for cervical transframinal injections, is that a bundled or an unbundled procedure? It's bundled. It makes no difference whether you select ultrasound or fluoro for your patients, right? C2, deep cervical plexus block, fluoro versus ultrasound, no difference. I think you're seeing a pattern here, right? Almost all the peer-reviewed literature where there's been a head-to-head -head comparison, even for these neuraxial techniques, shows virtually no difference between ultrasound and fluoro. And you're not gonna get paid more for even doing imaging. So I would select you get good at, I would suggest that you get good at one procedural technique, learn to master that, and then provide that technique for the vast majority of your patients, because it almost makes no difference. Does that frighten you to see C2, C3 injections? Anybody scared about that? Look how it's done. Look at, at the base of the skull over here, there's your spinous process, your uh, uh, vertebral lamina, your spinal canal. Does that scare anybody? Yes. Does that scare you, big guy? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, it doesn't scare me, actually. There's only one thing that scares me, it's this. <laughs> I have this dream. Oh, okay, that's, that, was the, that was for the psychiatry group, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think that, and you had an author, from one of you guys here from, the, from your uh, anesthesia department, Boom and Andron, he, he wrote a little editorial about six or seven years ago now, which I think is still spot on. When we approach the cervical spine with ultrasound, you gotta be really, really careful. There's a lot of people out there who really don't have the experience. The learning curve, I believe, is much steeper. We're doing ultrasound guided approaches to the head and neck, the cervical spine. I would urge great caution in proceeding forward with ultrasound if you haven't been well trained and been exposed to it for a prolonged period of time. Fluoroscopy is a very safe technique. And remember, where these procedures are bundled, it makes no difference whether you select ultrasound or fluoroscopy for your patients. So let's summarize here, okay? Let's talk about the difference or the impact of bundling or not. So let's talk about bundled injections, right? So this is uh, for SI joint injections. This is for epidural steroid injections, right? You'll see that if you do the procedure in your office, you get paid about double compared to what you get paid for doing it in the hospital. Same thing for epidural steroid injections. You get more than double doing it in, in your office. These are bundled procedures. Look at trigger point injections over here, all right? Trigger point injections, if you do it in your office, you get more than doing it in the hospital, but if you add seven, six, nine, four, two, what is that? Is that ultrasound or fluoro? Ultrasound. And then what is this guy over here? This is a trigger point injection, right? What is this over here, this intercostal injection, okay? Look at what the difference is if you add ultrasound for those procedures, right? Imaging for those procedures. You get an additional 60 bucks if you do it in the office. You get an additional 35 bucks if you do it in the hospital. Ultrasound, and this could be fluoro as well, you'll see that the, the reimbursement can be almost double or even more for these unbundled procedures. So make sure you understand conceptually what we're talking about, bundled versus unbundled in office versus in hospital, and why that can make an enormous difference at the end of a year for you, for your paying of your staff, your electrical bill, your water, your heat, and sending your kids to college. Now, I'm not advocating doing things for, for payment, but I think it's important that you know, when you're taking care of a lot of patients, what reimburses and what doesn't reimburse. And let's conclude. So, summary and conclusion, ultrasound's been proven to be safe for some procedures. Bundled procedures are becoming more common. Bundled is bad. But learn to recognize what is bundled versus what is unbundled. Uh, if you're gonna, if, if, if the code states that the ultrasound is not reimbursed, you must specify that fluoroscopy was utilized in your procedure notes to be able to get paid that unbundled rate. And you need a great coding specialist when you're starting out. Make sure that if you're starting a new practice, look for somebody with a wealth of worldly experience to help you get a jump start here. And of course, as time goes on, you can imagine the government is gonna become less and less likely to pay you unbundled fees and more and more likely to try to bundle everything and reduce your fees for your practice. Thank you very much, and I'll take any questions that you might have.